I'm Mario Andretti, and you are listening to Jack Roots Wind Tunnel. Riding home, it has been a long time. 2014 was his first NTT IndyCar Series Championship. He is a long way from home, a long way from Toowoomba, Queensland, Australia. But Will Power joins some very famous names as a two-time NTT IndyCar Series Champion. Power has done it. He's already clinched the championship, but Venus Lundquist is going to be able to celebrate here in just a moment across the line. Venus Lundquist is the 2022 Indy Lights Champion. Wind Tunnel is brought to you by Advance Auto Parts, the official auto parts retailer of NASCAR. Here's your Wind Tunnel host, Jack Aroon. There is little debate that this year's IndyCar Championship chase was a nail-biter right down to the final checkered flag in Laguna. Welcome, everyone, inside the wind tunnel. I'm Jack Aroot. At age 41, Team Penske's Will Power captured his second series title this year. And when he visits on this episode, he'll share his thoughts about why this time that championship chase and the rewards are different. As tight as the IndyCar title chase was, it was the polar opposite over in the Indy Light Series. 23-year-old Linus Lundquist just had to simply show up at Laguna Seca to win the Indy Lights title. When the Swede drops in, I'll get his take on his future. And taking the advance auto parts victory lap this week is a driver who was forced to shelve his racing career during the pandemic. After two years away from the sport he loved, Alex Brock returned to the short track scene and returned to winning. He'll swing by and we'll talk about the silver lining that that forced hiatus had upon his racing career. But before we start this IndyCar celebration, I need to get you up to speed on the news and the action from this past week. The saga of Kyle Busch was finally resolved when the two-time NASCAR champion announced that he'd signed on with Richard Childress Racing to drive the number eight Chevrolet Camaro next season. So now for the moment you all couldn't wait for, I'm excited to announce that I'll be taking my talents to welcome North Carolina to drive the number eight car for Richard Childress Racing starting in 2023. Speaking of next year, over on the IndyCar side, after a litigious back and forth, 2021 IndyCar champion Alex Pillow revealed that he will remain behind the wheel of Chip Ganassi's number 10 Honda in 2023. Part of the resolution does allow Pelo to serve as a test driver for McLaren's Formula One team. It also means that Felix Rosenquist, first thought to be headed to Formula E, will return to the cockpit in IndyCar for Aero McLaren SP. Now, on to last weekend's action. Let's kick off with an update from the NASCAR Advanced Auto Parts Weekly Series. And we get that from Lenny Baticki, host of Performance Racing Networks at the track. Thanks a lot, Jack. This is your NASCAR Advanced Auto Parts Weekly Racing Series report. We'll start at Eastbound Park in Canada. Brandon McFarland won that one. At Autodrome Chartier with Sebastian Bouchard. And at Autodrome Granby, Michael Perrant took the checkers. Colorado National took Chris Eggleston. Austin Paul won at Adams County Speedway in Iowa. New Hampshire, Monadnock Speedway to Todd Patnode. While at Hudson, it was David Greenslit. Bryce Bohm and Jacob Goaty winners at Minnesota's Elko Speedway, while Coos Bay in Oregon fell to Kelly McIntyre. Justin Bossior won at Riverhead Raceway in New York. Bethel Motor Speedway, a double for Ed Dockenhausen. Jay Dishnow won at Evergreen Speedway in Washington. Florence, South Carolina to Bryant Barnhill, while Mag Tate not only won the race, but the track championship. He'll get his name painted on the wall at Greenville Pickens Speedway. Hickory Motor Speedway to Isabella Robusto. Wake County Speedway falls to Clay Jones, who also grabbed the track's championship. Jennerstown, Pennsylvania, 10th win of the season. Barry Audi just keeps on keeping on. Grandview Speedway, groovy once again for Craig Von Doren. Irwindale, California to Buddy Shepard. Kevin Cantor wins at Motor Mile in Radford, Virginia. Langley Speedway to Matt Carter. Peyton Sellers and Trent Barnes both got victories at Dominion Raceway. Magic 
Valley Speedway in Idaho to Chris Cook. Neil Latham and Russ Ward, winners at Meridian. New Smyrna Speedway in Florida, Matthew Green and Rich Clouser both got wins. Seacock, Massachusetts to Dave Darling and Jeremy Smith got the checkers at Tucson Speedway in Arizona. That's your NASCAR Advanced Auto Parts Weekly Racing Series report. Thanks for having us, Jack. We'll see you next time. It was a short track weekend extravaganza that included all three of NASCAR's top series when the trucks, Xfinity, and Cup took to the last great coliseum, the Bristol Raceway. Thursday night, the trucks kicked off their playoff round of eight, and the winner was Ty Majeski, who fulfilled his destiny and earned his way to the championship finale this November in Phoenix, Arizona. Majeski just says, guys behind me, keep your noses clean. Yeah. Stay green. Stay green, folks. Ty Majeski. The road has not been easy, but it is a smooth road to the finish and the checkered flag tonight at Bristol. Ty Majeski wins in the truck series for the first time. Man, this is uh, unbelievable. I've been waiting for uh, an opportunity like this. Duke, Rhonda Forson, Allison, thank you for this opportunity. Just so proud to be here. Um, we came guns blazing for this race, took our best truck. Uh, Joe was aggressive on pitch strategy, got us out front, and we are able to get it done. This is uh, so cool. There's, my career has been so up and down, and um, there's been a lot of people to help me get to this point. It's uh, so cool. I know my late model guys are uh, watching back at the shop. You know, they're, the, they're the, a big reason why I'm here. Uh, my parents, my fiance. Um, this, is, uh, this is just damn cool. Friday night. It was the NASCAR Xfinity Series turn on the half mile, and it was Noah Gregson. All the way up the racetrack goes the nine. Here comes the 19 of Jones. Brandon's putting the pressure on him, trying to get that car up out of the racetrack into the outside wall, trying to get him to slip up into the debris. More lap traffic here. There's a bump. Now the 19 looks to the inside. Still can't make the pass. One more another, time around. Gonna have one lap at it, Rick. One shot. What will Brandon Jones do? Will he put the bumper to him? The final time down the back stretch. Here through three and four. Brandon Jones, can he catch him? No. Noah Grayson wins in Bristol. Three wins in a row for Grayson. Man, three in a row. Yeah, that last caution came out, and I knew if we could ring the top, it was going to be hard for him to get there. I appreciate Brandon Jones racing us clean, and... He fed us a bumper with two to go, and I was hanging on, scrubbing the fence, but holy we won here in Bristol in 2020, and there's no fans here. This is a 10 times cooler. I appreciate you, Bristol. Thank you, all you fans. Then, Saturday night, under the lights, the Cup Series playoffs first round came to a raucous conclusion. Two more turns of the Bass Pro Shops. Night race. Chris Buescher will win his second Cup Series race, and it happens in Bristol. Yeah! Yeah! That's awesome. Good job, guys. I love it. every time we come here. It's so special to me. Lost one that, that uh, really broke our heart back in, in 2015 on the Xfinity side with Gray's on top of the box. So this, um, this makes up for that. That's pretty, pretty awesome. So there you have it. Let's turn our attention to this week's guests and their championships. But before we celebrate the 2023 IndyCar season, you will meet Alex Brock when we kick off things with our weekly Advanced Auto Parts Victory Lap after this break. Coming up, you'll meet this week's Advanced Auto Parts Victory Lap guest after this message. Hey, car lovers, at Advance Auto Parts, we have what you need to keep your car running all season long. So if you enjoy getting ahead of the curve when it comes to taking care of your ride, Advance Auto Parts has everything to keep your ride on track to reach the victory lap. Because you can trust the team at Advance Auto Parts to assist you in finding what you need at the right price. Stop by Advance Auto Parts, where you're always number one. This is how we advance. 
man. This is for all those guys. Uh, there's a ton of them out there that, that are like me, that have won here, and all these great short tracks around here. We can do it. We just need the opportunities. Today proved it. Yeah, it's a short track, but it's still damn hard to win here, and we did it. They are hometown heroes, drivers who put their passion on the line in front of their friends. Here we go, three wide, got Sellers up into marble. Halfway home in this one, off turn four, he heads for the checkered flag. Here comes Riggs! Riggs is back at it on the inside! Jennerstown was pretty big on Saturday, but it was all to get him ready for this moment. The battle at Berlin 250, he's talked about what it would mean to him to win a huge race like this at his home track, and now he's half a lap away from doing just that. Buckle up and hold on tight. Time now to focus the spotlight on hometown heroes with this week's Advance Auto Parts Victory Lap. Brought to you by the NASCAR Advance Auto Parts Weekly Racing Series. Driving local racing in local communities forward. Well, taking a victory lap is a hard charger from Dominion Raceway, who in 2018 finished second in his division chase for the championship. Then in 2019, finished third. The name of the driver is Alex Brock. Alex, uh, let me let me go back and get the rest of that story because the Brock family uh, was involved in a restaurant and during COVID-19, you had to hang up your helmet. Yes, uh, one of the hardest decisions, but uh, the restaurant was what was able to get my racing career going. That's how I was even involved in racing growing up. Um, you know, we would cater all the drivers at Richmond Raceway, and that's what sparked my love for racing. And um, when the pandemic hit, we had to find out what's best for our family and was to uh, work in the restaurant, make sure everything was good, and uh, get through that. And, you know, now we're back at it trying to go for a uh, championship. And, and we're going to talk about that in a minute, but I, 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 I want to go back because – in the midst of we we've told so many stories here on wind tunnel about short trackers that had to shuffle and change and adjust due to COVID and all of us in America, if not the world had to do the same thing, but you had just begun to take a bunch of checkered flags. It looked as if look, 2020 was going to be your year. And then lo and behold, what is it? You only ran what four races in uh 20 and 21. Correct. Uh, two races at Langley and then two races at Dominion. That had to be the toughest thing in the world. I, I know family comes first, but for a young racer like you to just put the brakes on like that, can you describe to my listeners what it felt like? For me, it was so hard because right March of 2020, a week before the pandemic hit, we uh, had partnered with Sellers Racing Inc. to uh, go for a uh, championship at South Boston in late model stock car. We had, you know, everything we had tested. We were ready to go for that season opener. And then the brakes just slammed on us. And it was heartbreak. But, you know, it makes you realize real quick that you can have the best opportunity in the world. And then just like that, you know, the brakes hit. You know, though, that relationship that you have with the Sellers Racing Team exists to this day. Uh, H.C. and, of course, Peyton, who's been a regular here on Wind Tunnel and always talks about the young guns that are in his stable with his family's little side hustle there. But yours is a little bit different because you're running the Virginia late models, which is a little bit more cost efficient. But as I understand it, you and your dad take the phone calls from the sellers uh, people and they tell you what they think you should put on the car for the week upcoming. Tell me how that works. Yes, it's a huge blessing for us to be able to work with uh, H.C. Payton and my crew chief, Eric Winslow. You know, each week we uh, sit down, we discuss what do we need to do in the shop to get the car ready for that weekend. We implement it with um, my whole crew, my buddy Shannon Moreno. He comes and helps us in the shop each week. We take all of that, we implement it, and then we go to the racetrack on Saturday and just uh, do what we can. <laughs> During that period of time when you weren't driving, uh, you were being tutored, so to speak, mentored about what the key elements to developing a racecraft were. What was the biggest takeaway from that period? So for me, working with Peyton in 2020 was a huge step in the right direction for me, learning beyond just working on my own cars and all that. It was working with the championship team every single week, learning what it takes to win races in the shop, 
at the racetrack, all the processes that we have implemented, and it has just worked wonders for us. What's the best advice that they gave you as an up-and-coming young race, truck, race car driver? I think the biggest thing is staying humble, taking care of your equipment, and appreciating what you have and how to take care of your equipment. What's the best advice you got from your hero, your dad, who works shoulder to shoulder with you, you know, four or five nights a week in the shop getting your car ready? Biggest thing, you know, he's always told me is go out there, do the best you can, and try to bring it home in one piece. And unfortunately, if we don't, then we'll get back in the shop, crunch and make it happen so we can get back out there. So as I understand it, what you're telling me is you got bitten by the racing bug because you were catering race teams and drivers at Richmond. Is that correct? Correct. They are in Southside Speedway. Um, when I was, uh, I was that five-year-old kid that would go out there with my father and uh, work on the cars or work uh, at the racetrack. They'd let me sit in the cars and all that, kind of learn. And then just together, I got that bug. So is this a dream come true for, for you? For me, it's a dream come true because I was that five-year-old kid that had over 200 of the 164 die-cast cars that all I ever wanted you're, to do. You're kidding me. I wanted to be a race car driver. That's all I ever wanted. Um, and to be able to do that every single day is just a huge blessing that dreams do come true. I, I'm interested in how you got your nickname, the Brocket Ship. So it's funny because at Dominion Raceway, they, for some reason, they said, we have a rocket ship. And they say, Brock rhymes with rocket, so we're just going to call you the Brocket ship. So it just all perfectly fit together really, really well. I know a championship is what you're going after in 2022, but what's left on the bucket list that if all the stars align for Alex Brock, that in the future, what would you like to accomplish? Ideally, my goal would be, you know, to run the ARCA race at Daytona, to get out there and at least show my name, even if I just go test, you know, to get on Daytona one time would for me would be huge, but, you know, potentially get back in a late model one day and race travel around. But I'm just loving every minute of going out to Dominion Raceway and winning races. That's something that took me 10 years for all the package, you know, to come together. I've been racing 10 years now. I have seven wins to my um, profile here and six of them came this year. Well, I, I, when I was racing, I said, you know, in the beginning, I was like a monkey trying to mount a football. I had no idea what I was doing. And then just one night for me, it clicked and I started winning races. Yes. How about you? You know, it, it was weird. I was like the Chase Elliott. I finished second 18 times before I got my first victory. And then I got that victory. The pandemic hit. And then our first race back in 2022, we go out there and went open at night. So we knew it was coming. It just was, when was it going to happen? Well, I'm glad I didn't ask you if, if there was any racer rust, seeing how after a two-year layoff running only a, you know, a handful of races, first night out of the box, off the trailer, bam, you're back in victory lane. It, it was so humbling, just the fact, because everybody was like, you're going to be falling out of the car. You need to get in the gym. You need to start preparing. I was like, I'm just ready to go racing. <laughs> Restaurants doing well? Doing well. Um, staying busy with the restaurant. And I also work with uh, my sponsor, A Plus Roofing. I'm a uh, certified estimator there. So I'm in the roofing business now, which, um, you know, everybody needs a roof on their home. And I'm blessed to be able to do that as well. Well, let's at least get a plug for your family's restaurant in. Yes, Brock's Barbecue, um, A Plus Roofing, all of my partners, WG Speaks, um, Quinn Printing Creations, Chesden Automotive, The Jeff Cat Show, Midnight Performance. There's so many people that just put their heart and soul into what we're doing. Elite Four Staffing, I mean, Atlas Designer Shingles. There's so many people that have came on board to help us because they see something in me that it's just quite frankly amazing. And, you know, to get them to victory lane, all of us work together to win. It's incredible. Yeah. You know, it shouldn't come as a surprise because just in the brief 10 minutes that I have got to know you, your enthusiasm is infectious and uh, we wish you nothing but the very best and really are happy that you got to take this victory lap here on the win Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. You've been listening to the advanced auto parts, victory lap. 
brought to you by the NASCAR Advanced Auto Parts Weekly Racing Series, driving local racing in local communities forward. Well done, Linus Lundquist to hang on and win for the first time in 2022. Circuit flag, circuit flag, we are the winner, woo! It's been a great year for me and my team, HMD Motorsports with Dale Coyne Racing. We've won five races, we've uh, had a bunch of pole position, a bunch of podiums. I think we, we've pretty much got the whole package nailed down. This Linus Lundquist is the 2022 Indy Lights Champion. And I'll be joined by Linus Lundquist next. Hey, car lovers, at Advance Auto Parts, we have what you need to keep your car running all season long. So if you enjoy getting ahead of the curve when it comes to taking care of your ride, Advance Auto Parts has everything to keep your ride on track to reach the victory lap. Because you can trust the team at Advance Auto Parts to assist you in finding what you need at the right price. Stop by Advance Auto Parts, where you're always number one. This is how we advance. Welcome back to your podcast home for motorsports conversation, Jackaroot's Wind Tunnel. Even though he finished sixth in the last Indy Lights race in Monterey, California, Linus Lundquist is indeed the 2022 Indy Lights presented by Cooper Tires champion. He did so on the heels of an incredibly dominating season. Five wins, six poles, nine podiums, 13 top fives, and 255 laps led. And he joins me now here inside the wind tunnel. Linus, first off, welcome to the wind tunnel, but more importantly, congratulations on the win. Those uh, records that I rattled off before you joined me, pretty impressive uh, for 2022. What was the secret? Thank you. Uh, firstly, thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, thank you. It's been uh, it's been one hell of a year for us. Um, enjoyed it from from start to finish. And uh, <laughs> if I had a secret to this, I would sell it very, very for a lot of money. I'll tell you that much. Uh, but I think, you know, it's honestly it might, might sound a little bit of a cliche, but honestly, we, we just worked really hard. You know, we, we had a good year last year where we finished third uh with a couple of wins and a couple of poles and we realized that on our day we we can be really really fast and we just wanted to make sure that we had more of those days and that our bad days aren't as bad as they were last year and i think that's been one of the keys for us to win this championship that you know our lows that was a p6 a p5 or maybe even on the podium uh and eventually that's that's how you win a championship i think so what's next for you? Because we're we're in a, uh, shall I say, a vortex where there's a lot of seats that are already filled at the next level. And you are able to at least shop with the bonus and the what they call the scholarship for you to further your career and move up the IndyCar ladder. How's that search going? It's, it's going all right. Like you said, there is uh, there's a lot of seats close and there's not an abundance of them out there um but i still believe that there is a shot for us to be on the indycar grid next year i mean that's definitely the target without a doubt um and i want to believe that the most important thing is what you do on track and uh, i do think that we've showed this year that we deserve to uh, to at least be given a shot next year uh and we'll see what happens uh but i have a good good group of guys that that's helping me with that one and um i think we we can get this done and as you mentioned as well the scholarship um that that the series has obviously will will help whatever it will be there's no question you crushed it this season so if you have to and i'm going to prefer to say that the glass is half full and we will see you on the indycar circuit in 2023 but if you have to are you okay with staying another year in indy lights no, I will not be staying another year in Indy Lights. Uh, that's um, that's not happening. I mean, it was it was tough for me as as it was to even find a budget for this year, uh, and it will uh, I won't be able to to make that kind of work again. Um, so I won't be doing lights again. If I'm not in Indy Car, then we'll see what happens. Um, I'm not closing any doors, but obviously the most realistic and and what's closest for me right now is is Indy Car. TK and I've talked about this on our show, Brick by Brick, drivers careers and futures while you have to take care of your racecraft and your people have to go out there and work hard to find identify and 
and grab the next step are often predicated and dictated by the craziest of circumstances. How how can you pursue a career knowing that it could be just blind luck that lands you to the next step? Yeah, I've been asking that myself a lot uh, for the last couple of years. Why am I doing this again? Um, but, you know, and, and people ask me as well, some of the young drivers that come up to me just like, so how, how did you do it? But there's not one way of doing this. You know, every road um, is so different. So I wouldn't say there's a recipe that you can follow and ultimately you will you will end up in this position. Uh, and the same goes for, you know, uh, you look at someone like Will Power, like you said, you know, it, it was just one of those phone calls and you, you got to be ready when it comes. Um, but I also think that you can you can increase your chance of a, of a phone call like that happening by doing certain things. Uh, and I think that's what I'm focused on doing right now. The number one thing is obviously perform on track. But then secondly, is obviously networking and, and trying to see what's out there. Um, and I want to believe that we've done a pretty good job of that this year uh of just you know laying the landscape seeing what's happening um obviously the news today with with Polo and and Rosenquist staying uh that will sort of have a little bit of a domino effect for me so it will be interesting to see see what what happens for me but i uh i also want to believe that the glass is half full it takes an awful lot of patience to be at the point in your career and have to wait on others so from a racer standpoint you just want to get behind the wheel you you certainly have proven by your performance that you deserve to move up to the very next level. If IndyCar is out of the picture in the immediate future, what are some of the other vistas on the horizon that you could go after? Anything that they got four wheels and a <laughs> steering wheel. Um, honestly, I don't know. I haven't looked too much into it, uh, but obviously in an ideal scenario, I would still stay in single seaters and, there's not a lot of series out there. Um, and obviously, I probably have said as well, but there's been some articles that, um, you know, the Super Formula might be a step to go. Um, and if that door were to open, I wouldn't be the one to close it um, if any car wasn't on uh, on plans. But I want to stay here in the U.S. Uh, I think, you know, for the last three years, we've done some good good things here in the U.S. And it would be a shame to, to have to leave it to go somewhere else. But we'll see what happens. I know that I'll be happy driving anything um, as long as uh, I got a chance to be winning. All right. I, I know there's a lot of balls in the air and you're a, you're an expert juggler, but still uh, on a one to 10 with 10 being a sure bet, where do you rate the chances of you being an Indy car next season? I'd say about a seven. Wow. That's good. Yeah. I want to say around a seven. Um, yeah. Any plans to uh, celebrate? your championship because it it really was a dominating performance and you can strut your stuff now i know you got a lot on the uh you know on, on your on your desk trying to figure out where you're going next year but we all have to take time once in a while to kick back and enjoy uh the fruits of our labor so what's what what's on your docket uh to celebrate this indy lights championship yeah i've been i've been celebrating a little bit We've we've taken some time to celebrate it, which was nice. Actually, Sunday night was was cool. Uh, met a bunch of IndyCar guys as well, so that was nice to see them kick back as well. Because uh, obviously, you see them on track, and obviously that's one relationship. But it's it's another thing when you meet them outside of the track, which was nice. And I was fortunate enough that that my family flew out, so they were there for for the last race. And we're actually right now in in Los Angeles, and we're taking a couple of days to uh, to look at this place and just relax before we are flying back to Indianapolis and the banquet. Listen, it's been a real treat to visit with you and to be part of the celebration on what you accomplished this season. There's no question in my mind that the next step will identify itself and it'll reward you for all the hard work you put in your craft. Thanks so much for joining me here inside the wind tunnel. Thank you. Thank you, man. Coming up after the break. Riding home. It has been a long time. 2014 was his first NTT IndyCar Series Championship. He is a long way from home, a long way from Toowoomba, Queensland, Australia. But Will Power joins some very famous names as a two-time NTT IndyCar Series Champion. Power has done it. The 2022 NTT IndyCar Champion, Will Power, will join me after this timeout.
Hey, car lovers, at Advance Auto Parts, we have what you need to keep your car running all season long. So if you enjoy getting ahead of the curve when it comes to taking care of your ride, Advance Auto Parts has everything to keep your ride on track to reach the victory lap. Because you can trust the team at Advance Auto Parts to assist you in finding what you need at the right price. Stop by Advance Auto Parts, where you're always number one. This is how we advance. advance. Welcome back to your podcast home for motorsports conversation. Jackaroot's Wind Tunnel. Will Power joins some very famous names as a two-time NTT IndyCar Series champion. Will Power captures his second NTT IndyCar Championship and he joins me now. Will, first of all, congratulations. Second of all, has it sunk in? I guess when I uh, woke up about five minutes ago, <laughs> <laughs> um, I did reflect a bit and go, um, you know, felt pretty good about it. I did, uh, you know, it was a very stressful weekend and then, yeah, an amazing year, you know, from the, the whole team, the whole team did, uh, I can't, I can't emphasize how much, uh, the, uh, group that I had on my car played a part in this and, you know, the positivity and, and the, the right perspective and attitude. And it really made a difference. You shared with the world in your champions interview on NBC, the impact that a premonition by your wife, Liz had in a conversation she had with you before the season even started. Let me tell you in the off season, my wife said to me, I believe you're going to beat Mario's record and you're going to win the championship. She said that to me and it actually gave me confidence that I could do it. The fact that she said that, that's how much uh, confidence I have in her gut feel. Uh, so she said those words, and I just couldn't believe that that came true. Can you expand a little bit on what that did to the way you raced all year long? I will say it it really gave me confidence because I have so much faith in her gut feel because there's been a couple times where she's been dead right with my mind you know she made me at one point get out of a contract i didn't even have a ride in 09 because she said well you know penske or ganassi could call i'm like that's insane like they're not gonna why are they gonna and then elio gets arrested and penske calls like a month later it just blew my mind but anyway um she said that and it was probably in response to me being maybe a bit down or like man this is gonna be hard i don't know whether i'm gonna yeah, beat Mario's record and and I'm not sure I'm gonna ever win a championship again. And she goes, I believe that you're going to you're going to beat Mario's record this year and you're going to win the championship. I believe that. And she said that. Um, you know, not really a premonition, but more maybe a belief. Um and she yeah, she was she was right. She had a great gut feel for that. Even like in the last three races, you know, and she's, she's like, I'm not worried. You know, she gets super stressed, but she says, I'm not, I'm not worried. She kept saying that to me. I'm not worried. And actually kind of in the back of my mind, when she said that before it's, she's been pretty right. And she was, well, nobody knows, nobody knows you better than Liz. There's no question about that, but let me, let me ask you this. I go back to, your win in the Indianapolis 500 and the, the incredible uh, eruption of emotion that you had. Two corners to go, fans on their feet waving and cheering. He'll never be introduced the same way again. From now on, it'll be willpower, Indianapolis 500 winner for 2018. Check your flag. I couldn't stop screaming on the radio. I can't believe it. We've talked about it before. In many cases, that was a period in your career where validation was so very, very important. But now, it you know, 40-something, you, you certainly, you race for yourself and you have nothing more to accomplish. You'd already been there, done that, and got the T-shirt and the color photo. So how... Did this transformation mentally for willpower start to unfold to where you raced for willpower? You raced for your team. You, uh, yeah, I, I think that's just been a, a process of 
you know, getting older and appreciating the fact that you get to do this for a living, you know, a lot of gratitude that, you know, you kind of step back and, uh, you know, by the time you're 40, you've seen a lot. You understand how the world works. You, you can see how people have it. Like people, a lot of people have it extremely tough. So you take a step back and go, no matter what happens in a race, you know, the fact that I get to do this, the fact that I live the way I do, I mean, it's just, I'm just lucky, uh, very fortunate. Um, so I think that perspective certainly takes a lot of selfishness out of it and, you know, I guess some pressure as well. And you're just happy to be there and be doing it. And you love the craft of racing. You enjoy it. And I have to say it was way more about the journey this year than the destination. You know, it, like when I crossed the line, it was just I really enjoyed that journey, you know, and and uh, and it was done with a great group of guys and really felt I honestly truly wanted to do it more for them than me. I really did. Because I felt my engineer's pain, uh, you know, over the years, letting some of those go, and I know how much work he puts into it. Um, it was, you know, him and Robbie uh, Atkinson, who's a data engineer guy, and Dave Fastino, my engineer, but um, he's been with me since I was seven. So great journey with him, and I truly wanted to do it for that and the group on my car, a real group of positive guys, and, um, you know, I owed it to them to give it, my all um you know and not not make a mistake and just you know put my head down and, and do the job and, and that's what happens i'm not trying to sound like dr phil here in any way shape or form but it, it, listening to you recount what this championship means to you when you started your career you weren't a family man now you have a great family and, and i wonder if along the way at age 40 it dawned on you that as much as I have that core, that family at home, I also, Faustina and everybody else that's been supporting you, they're equally important as family. So it was it was easier for you to do it for someone else than it was to validate any more about you as an individual. Yeah, yeah, potentially. And, you know, you talk about family. I mean, I... I regard the whole IndyCar paddock as family. I've been around 17 years now and um, I just I absolutely love it. And I can't say that I dislike any drivers in the field. You know, I really like them all and consider them all friends, um, uh, you know, no matter what happens on the track because we're all fighting fiercely. We all get mad at each other at times. But it's a great fraternity. It really is. The whole motorsport community is you know, really all have each other's backs at the end of the day. We all have, share this amazing passion for this, this sport and, uh, you know, whether it's IndyCar, NASCAR, Formula One, V8 Supercar, um, you know, I guess social media has connected everyone a lot more these days, but you can just see, you know, the interactions amongst everyone and the congratulations when someone, you know, wins a major event in motorsport. Uh, yeah, everyone's... It's a great community. It really is. Can you share with me some of the social media based congratulations that came outside the IndyCar circle when you captured this second championship? Uh, yeah. I mean, a, a bunch of guys that I raced in British Formula Three, uh, you know, a bunch of supercar guys. You know, Mark Weber obviously helped me along the way. Um, yeah. No, just, yeah, from all, all, all sides, yeah, which I know a lot of people. I know a lot of people in the karting, you know, uh, karting fraternity. So, yeah, a lot of a lot of friends, good friends in there. What about your family? You know, your brother, we've always been entertained when he's been on site. And in many ways, maybe personality-wise, he's a little, I guess it's safe to say, more gregarious and outgoing than the willpower that the average IndyCar fan knows. So what was your family's reaction when uh, you, you uh, finally, uh, well, took the title? I think, yeah, they were all watching extreme. Like I, my dad's never called me multiple times over a weekend. <laughs> He'll, he, the, but, the, you know, as we went along this year, he would call more and more like each day. Normally just call after the weekend, after the race. 
but he was calling me every day. You're like, yeah, how's it going? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah they're all pretty engrossed in this one even my cousins uh over there you yeah, know sending me messages so um yeah i don't think i think they're all happy to see me get a second one because they know i've been at it a long time i'm you know i'm de- you know quite a bit older now since since the 2014 championship so uh yeah they were they're all watching waiting and you know probably pretty nervous honestly the way that last race went <laughs> how nervous were you i just had my head down i was it was it was i had to dig deep i'll tell you that um and that was from the outset as soon as i took off i'm like i'm leaving nothing on the table i know new garden's going to be there he had better ties than me and uh you know he's one of the best in the series i know he's going to be up there at the end and sure enough it goes yellow and he closed the gap he's p5 and then he passes me so I knew that was coming and um I had to really drive the wheels off it. Like the the degradation is massive there. Like I'm telling you, massive. Like you have nothing left in those tires when you when you uh pit. So you spend many laps just fingertipping it. So Will, now that you're you know the winner of the 2022 NTT IndyCar Championship, now that your wife's premonition or prediction has come full circle and you are the champion. Uh, what does the power family plan to do even privately or just within your own family to celebrate this great accomplishment? Oh yeah. I think just being together, you know, and all this time is, is celebration enough enjoying each other's company. I mean, we do, we do everything together, the whole group, including the mother-in-law. <laughs> She's there. <laughs> <laughs> uh which is good i mean she's got a very close relationship with my yeah with Bo. so um yeah we we uh we don't we will go on a nice vacation um in this off season but but um pretty tight-knit family and i'm gonna go home to australia as soon as i can and see my parents I haven't seen them for three years so all, all my brothers so they you know I, I need to get back there and um you know reunite the moment when we saw you uh gather up your son Bo, and he's just at the age where i don't know if you realize it or not he'll always remember that he may not know all of the particulars now there there's a moment that you and he are going to be able to share when you're my age and he's your age have you thought about that yeah no i i do think about that you know because you you obviously when you're you see your little kid, you reflect back to the little memory, you know, some of those memories you have as a kid and you do know that there are just specific memories that stick with you forever, no matter what. And uh, I hope some of, you know, we do share some of those memories, but yeah. Yeah. Great to have my son there and in, uh, in victory lane. Congratulations. And I appreciate your carving out a little bit of time post celebration to visit with us here on the wind tunnel. You take care of my best to your entire family. Yeah. Thank you, Jack. Appreciate it. Thank you. I'll close things out after this message from Advance Auto Parts. Hey, car lovers. At Advance Auto Parts, we have what you need to keep your car running all season long. So if you enjoy getting ahead of the curve when it comes to taking care of your ride, Advance Auto Parts has everything to keep your ride on track to reach the victory lap. Because you can trust the team at Advance Auto Parts to assist you in finding what you need at the right price. Stop by Advance Auto Parts, where you're always number one. This is how we advance. I really do appreciate your listening today. And I sincerely hope that you enjoyed my conversation with short tracker Alex Brock, Indy Lights champion Linus Lundqvist, and of course, the 2022 NTT IndyCar Series champion, Will Power. Make sure you check back next week, won't you, for another episode of Wind Tunnel when we will unpack more stories, have more conversations, and hopefully leave you with a deeper appreciation of the sport that you love. Until then, I'm Jack Avery. Thanks for dropping by here inside the Wind Tunnel. 
You've been listening to Jackaroot's Wind Tunnel. Wind Tunnel is brought to you by Advance Auto Parts, the official auto parts retailer of NASCAR. Follow us on our social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. And be sure to subscribe to Wind Tunnel's YouTube channel, where you'll discover bonus content. I'm Lenny Baticki of Performance Racing Networks at the Track Show, saying thank you for joining us today. See you again next week.